A few days ago, I bought this thing, a lighter, for the price of one euro and forty cents. When I left the shop, I realized how cheap it was, given all the activities that are necessary to make it. Hundreds of people must have been involved in its production and distribution. And then the price is only one euro forty, which is equivalent to less than ten minutes of work for a minimum wage in Western Europe. This is just one example. Almost all products you buy in a shop are incredibly cheap if you measure the price by the amount of work that you need to buy them. This extends from simple things like pins or paper clips to high-tech instruments like the latest smartphone. They are cheap in terms of needed labor time and they are abundantly available at least for most people in the prosperous parts of the world. This material affluence for many people is the result of the Industrial Revolution that started some 250 years ago in England. During this relatively short period of time, the world has changed more profoundly in several respects than in thousands of years of human history preceding this recent period. And this change is still going on. What was the Industrial Revolution? It was primarily a basic transformation in the production and transportation of material goods, in which human and animal muscular energy was replaced by mechanical energy based on burning fossil fuels. Machines took over much of the work that used to be done by men and also by animals. Mechanical machine production was substituted for physical human labor. This transformation was marked by one of the great inventions of human history, the invention of the steam engine. The revolutionary principle of this engine is that one form of energy, heat, is transformed into another one, motion, which is then used for making and moving things. Its first, still rather primitive use was pumping water out of coal mine shafts. Then improved engines were put to use in the textile production by which hand spinners and weavers were replaced by industrial factory workers. And subsequently the steam engine was used for transportation in trains and boats. The industrial revolution did not stop the heat there. It extended to the production of ever more material things, including completely new ones, such as cars, airplanes. It involved ongoing mechanization and automation up to present-day robotization, in which human physical labor is increasingly taken over by machines. And it spread geographically from Britain to the European continent and North America and then to other parts of the world. Today the whole human world is one big industrial society. Why did this happen? How to explain its beginnings in Britain in the 18th century? Well, people invented, uh, improved and used the steam engine because they profited from it. Some of them became quite rich by doing so. But why at that time and that place? Three kinds of condition were basic, ecological, technological and social. The basic ecological condition is the natural availability of raw materials that are necessary for industrial production. Steam engines needed a lot of fuel in the form of coal. Now coal was abundantly available in the English soil and had been used for heating already for centuries, increasingly replacing wood, which was in short supply because of deforestation. The second basic condition was a high level of specialized technological knowledge. 
The pioneering inventors of the Industrial Revolution, such as James Watt, the inventor of the improved steam machine that could be used in textile production, were highly skilled craftsmen, engineers, who used the technological and scientific knowledge that had been accumulated in the preceding centuries. In a sense, they were the heirs of the scientific revolution of the 17th century, without being scientists themselves. Advancing knowledge was not their primary goal, while being practical men, they shared with the scientists a rational view of nature and a belief in technological pro progress by rational means. The third basic condition for the Industrial Revolution was social or socio-economic, the development of a new system of trade, finance and production after the Middle Ages that was peculiar to Western Europe, market capitalism. This comprised a set of interconnected conditions. The existence of an active, profit-oriented entrepreneurial class, the availability of large numbers of poor people without property, many, many of them former peasants who had been driven from the land, who could be employed in the new factories. Also, highly developed transport and trade on a national and international scale, so that producers could get the raw materials they needed and sell standardized products, such as the textiles from the cotton industry, in huge numbers. Important was also the commercialization and technological improvement of agriculture, so that more food was produced for the expanding urban population. And finally, emerging market capitalism included political conditions, the protection of private property by the state and the guaranteed freedom for the entrepreneurs to pursue their commercial interest within the framework of the law. All these conditions were attained in 18th century Britain, more than in any other country at the time. Britain also had the advantage of having colonies and former colonies from which it drew materials, such as raw cotton from the slave plantations in the American South, and to which it sold its industrial products, such as the textiles to British India. This specific combination of conditions explains why the Industrial Revolution started in Britain in the 18th century. But once it had begun there, it spread over the rest of the world, though in different forms and with different consequences. Other countries followed the British lead by developing their own industrial production. Entrepreneurs did so for reasons of profit. Governments stimulated it for reasons of national power and independence. From the West, industrial factory production spread to Japan and then to other Asian countries and Latin America. It conquered the whole world, though in different ways and different degrees in different parts of the world. The Industrial Revolution transformed human societies in unprecedented ways. Today, we all live in a world that is very different from the world 250 years ago. What are these differences? In other words, what were the consequences of the Industrial Revolution? This is the topic of my next talk.